Okay, so this is the third section of this video. It is the practical demonstration of how Tenasa works. So what we will do are these things. We will add a compatible access point and a gear model, a WG103, and import the configuration. Then we will add an Ubiquiti iRouter Tanaza powered, meaning that it's flashed with our firmware, with the agent inside. And we will copy the SSID profiles from the WG103 to the Ubiquiti one. Then we will see something about the monitoring section, which is a new feature which is coming, and about the multi-network and multi-location capability. So this is the topology we are going to use. There is a gateway uh, with no DHCP, a DHCP server active. Um, there is this host I'm currently using for the presentation on which we are going to install a Tenasa agent. And we will use this agent to contact the Netgear, which has its original firmware. Then we will add the Ubiquiti Air Router with uh, the Tenasa firmware, which will connect uh, to the cloud through the agent which is inside itself. So let's do it. So this is the Tanaza Cloud interface. Before logging in, uh, I just wanted to point out that we have here, that's right, pinging everything uh, to be sure that the internet connection works, to be sure that everything is working correctly and see what happened on the network inside. So let's go to the Tanaza Cloud interface. As you can see, the interface is very, very simple. It's designed to be simple. It's designed to avoid any kind of confusion when you want to do something. So what do you want to do with this interface? You want to configure devices or you want to monitor devices. So now we don't have any device, so we have to add a device. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to add an access point. As I was showing in the architecture, in the topology, um, we are going to add an access point in the local area network of this computer through an agent we are going to install on this computer. So the IP address of the device I want to add is this. One hundred and ten, just to show you that there is an interface of a Netgear here and that you have to log in here. So let's say we want to add this device. We will reach it through an agent installed on a host. This list could be huge. You could have an agent installed on a remote server anywhere. Then we have to pick up a name. Um, as I'm not very creative, I will get a Star Wars one. I don't like C3PO, I can get another one. Unsolo is good, okay. I will place Unsolo in Algeria. And then I just click to go on. So what's happening now, the system is checking if there is an agent installed on this computer, and if there is not an agent, the system will automatically install it on this computer. And this will be done through the browser. So the system is going to ask me, here it is, the security password of the administration of this computer. And once I give the privileges, the installation is complete, and now, we have a second step of the installation of an agent. It's going to contact the Tanaza Cloud infrastructure and uh, to sync its unique token that identifies him with the unique name we have for this account, the wfd3 at tanaza.com. So once this is done, the agent is owned by this account. And this happens just the first time. The next time, these two steps will not happen. So now, the Tanaza Cloud infrastructure is trying to contact the device through the agent. So it's now pinging and talking with the um, Netgear access point. So we now have to say which are the credential, which in the case of um, Netgear are pretty simple, admin password, the standard one. And then we click on next. So now the system is logging into the device and trying to get at least a unique thing that will identify that device. Usually it is a web page with the model, firmware version, and vendor names, and these informations. But they can be different depending on the single access point model. It can be an SSH request or something else. Now, the access point has been contacted and uh, we authenticated, so we are now retrieving the configuration of that access point. 
and we are going to sync this information. Okay, here we go. So we have added this Netgear WG103 with this firmware version, the 20012. Uh, the name is Han Solo, and we added it to my network, which is the default network. So we want now to configure this device. So what we can do is to configure any standard parameter of access points. The ones that are most interesting are the ones related to the SSIDs profiles. So Tanaza will never change anything in your configuration without telling you. So what you have to do when you have new profiles is to decide how to manage them compared to the network ones. You might want to import these SSIDs or maybe you just want to delete them. In this case, I'm importing the admin SSID and the guest SSID both to the network. So add SSID, admin SSID to my network SSIDs. And I turn it on. And I do the same here. And I turn it on. Now I apply. Okay, so now the engine is applying this new um, configuration to the Netgear. The configuration is being translated from the specific connector of the Netgear, and in particular, it's being uh, translated into a text file that contains all the configuration, and then this file is sent to the device. So on the engine and Tanaza cloud infrastructure perspective, once the device received the file and, uh, and gives confirmation, we are ready to go. So what's going on now is that the Tanaza engine is still sending the configuration. Now, the device accepted the configuration. As you can see here, it's still connected because it has to start the rebooting process. So in a while, we will see this stop pinging. And then after the reboot, it will start again. Let's add a second access point. This time, we will add a Tanaza flashed access point, an Ubiquiti, a router. So as you can see, the experience is a little bit different. It's much better, I would say. We are actually scanning the network and uh, listening for devices to pop up. So we have a new air router with the firmware version 150, and we want to add it. So the 66.1 IP is a fallback IP address. If there is a DHCP server in the LAN, the um, access point will take it dynamically. I just put them fixed and apply. So actually, um, the system is configuring the networking information of the device through messages at level two. After this, the device will reboot and will have a correct IP address. So the authenticate device step, which is the step in which the device will talk to the cloud and associate its uh, unique token to uh, the username will happen on a level three communication, which is secure. And here we go. The device just rebooted and uh, we can now see it is answering to the ping and uh, it's now connecting to the Tanaza cloud infrastructure and uh, making the authentication. And then again, as uh, for the other access point, we are getting the configuration. So here we go. So we added a ubiquity access point, a model I router. The access point is Tanaza powered, meaning there is our firmware on board. The version 150 with this name, which is the standard name with the uh, MAC address embedded. And uh, it was added to the same network of the other one. So now we have a network with two devices, a ubiquity access point flashed with Tanaza firmware and a Netgear access point with its original firmware. So what we want to do now is to apply the SSID profile that we imported from the Ham Solo Netgear to the Tanaza one. Okay, so the Tanaza access point has an SSID which is active, the Tanaza. We want to remove it. And we want to turn on the two SSID profiles related to the network meaning to the set of access points that are configured in a centralized way. 
I click and just apply. This will apply the configuration to this device. And meanwhile, I will be able to do anything I want on the other device, all the other devices. So the device received the configuration and is now rebooting. As you can see, um, a device flashed with our firmware uh, performs much better in terms of time required to um, receive the configuration and reboot. So while it's rebooting, what I want to do is to apply a centralized configuration. Let's say I'm tired of allowing people to access the guest SSID. I don't want it to be open anymore. So just go to this SSID section. I pick the guest SSID, which is associated to two access points, the Tanaza and the Han Solo, with no encryption, and I change the wireless security um, configuration. I just pick a WPA2 PSK, I feel good is okay as password, and apply. So I'm applying a new password for the SSID um, profile to two devices of two different vendors through the cloud. So we are waiting for two devices to reboot. Let's see now the monitoring section. There are some global information at the top and then four graphics displaying the packets sent, received, and the bytes sent and received. It's pretty simple. At last, I want to show you what you have to do in case you want to manage multiple locations or just multiple networks. You just go to manage networks, you add a network. Once you select the network and you decide if you want to monitor or configure, in any moment you can change the network you are working on thanks to this combo box. So if the user has a simple view of his network in his mind, the interface will be simple. If the user wants to do something complex, the interface will become more complex. Now, this is the end of the third part. We can now go to the next part.